What's up guys, I'm Jeff. Welcome to part two of my Hell's Revenge Trail Guide series. In this episode, we are covering the famous optional obstacle, Hell's Gate. I've got a ton of footage of different rigs climbing this obstacle. I'm gonna show you how we drive it, how we spot it, and I'm gonna show you all the mistakes that we've made over the years in this obstacle. If you've got a comment or tip about Hell's Gate, please share it in the comment section down below so all of us can learn. The first thing you'll notice when you walk to the top of Hell's Gate is that it is steep, long, and intimidating. Hell's Gate can really be broken down into two parts. The first part is really a V-notch, which takes you almost all the way to the top of Hell's Gate, and then you have a technical flexi section that you have to climb out of. Hell's Gate is intimidating and it can be dangerous. There's plenty of videos here on YouTube of accidents occurring, rigs rolling down Hell's Gate. Uh, but personally, I've never even seen a rig laying on its side on Hell's Gate and definitely have never even seen a rollover. And I've witnessed a lot of rigs climbing up Hell's Gate without any issue. Uh, probably the most mind blowing one to me is the TJ that gets almost all the way to the top, gets to the flexi section and rolls head over heels all the way down. So I'll put that comment down below, uh, put that link to the video down below so you guys can watch. Um, but with that said, I think if you keep a level head, if you've got a decent amount of technical wheeling experience, you shouldn't have any issue. Don't let your rig get ahead of your brain on Hell's Gate. Go slow. There's, there's no problem with slowly crawling up this obstacle. Uh, but if this is your first ever off-road wheeling trip, first ever wheeling trip in Moab, and you don't have a ton of technical wheeling experience, I recommend getting more technical wheeling experience before attempting Hell's Gate. Uh, the flexi section on Hell's Gate loves to pick on short wheelbase rigs. Jeep TJs, two-door JKs, FJ Cruisers, uh, Razors, on and on. Long wheelbase rigs definitely excel on the flexi section on Hell's Gate. Um, so I'll, I'll also post some links down below of long wheelbase rigs on Hell's Gate that make it look easy. There's plenty of full-size rigs, half ton, three-quarter ton, one ton, Ford excursions, climbing right up. Uh, the Jeep JT Gladiator is right at home on Hell's Gate. Hell's Gate is a very popular obstacle and rightly so. Usually there's a crowd assembled at the top watching the rigs come up and that could be intimidating in itself. Uh, most of these folks are there just to spectate. So I never let them bother me. Um, I don't even see that they're there. I'm focused on driving the obstacle. I'm focused on my speed, my line, my finesse, and I don't even see them. So focus on your spotter if you have one. Uh, focus on small steering movements, finesse, throttle control. Don't even worry about the crowd. Hell's Gate is definitely more of a mental challenge than it is a technical obstacle. You can and should crawl Hell's Gate. Throttle is not your friend. Uh, you won't have to bump any part of the obstacle with momentum. Make sure you're air down enough. Make sure you have your sway bar disconnected. And I'll show you a video when I climbed up Hell's Gate with my sway bar connected by accident. If you have lockers, engage them. That's what they're there for. Um, with that said, you can crawl it without lockers. I've got a clip in this video of Cameron climbing it his first time without lockers. Uh, but if you do have, if you do have lockers, use them. That's what they're for. Um, when you're driving up the V-notch section, you basically want to keep your hood level. And it's my opinion and our group's opinion that it's really up to the driver to do that. So uh, we usually position our spotters up at the top and then it's up to the driver to get up there. If you keep a slow, steady speed, you really shouldn't have any issue. Uh, but if you do have a spotter, they can help you out from the top and, and, and direct you in the way that you need you need to go but you basically steer to the side that drops so if your driver front tire 
drops down into the V-notch, then you want a steer driver to, uh, to get into position to where you're straddling that crack again. Um, don't drive too fast, especially if it's your first time on Hell's Gate. So the slower you go and the more, and the more finesse you have, the more time you have to keep things from going south. All right, so here's what the descent looks like. Uh, you basically drop off the top, has a little V-notch with a ledge, and then once you make your way over that top section there, it's smooth uh, for the whole way down. Here's a clip of a built rig making his way down the top of the descent here. If you haven't ran it before, I definitely recommend getting out, walking it, just to see what you're up against. Uh, this first little That's section like here a is a little bit of a V and there's a little bit of a drop. And to me, the first time I went down this, I was pretty spooked, honestly. Uh, I didn't get out to take a look and I started driving over and I thought, man, what the heck am I doing? <laughs> so I would get out, take a look at it, see what you're up against. But uh, coming down this first section, you, you know, you don't need a spotter, but as long as you have the, the correct line, you'll be okay. So you make your way over this first little uh, ledge section that's a little more V'd out. Then the trail completely flattens out, and it's just like a roller coaster coming down. Uh, if there's some sand on it, you might slip a little bit, but otherwise it's a pretty straight descent down. Yep. It's still smooth. You're good. Yep. Little passenger. Yep. Just like that. You feel just kind of ride, ride, ride the wall to your left. You can see the tire track. See that, you know, you stay out of the V. All right, here's some dash cam footage of Bill heading down the descent. Damn and Cameron boy. giving him some really good advice over the radio there to keep his driver tire up on that wall on the left and to stay out of that V. You, you know, you don't want your tires falling down in that V and getting all cattywampus. So uh, just kind of straddle that crack and, uh, and make your way over that little hump there. You can see Cameron got out of his LJ down there at the bottom to just kind of direct Bill a little bit uh, as this was Bill's first time down this obstacle here. Uh, like I said, man, the first time I came down this, um, I think I might have slipped down into that V a little bit and maybe pucker a little bit, made my heart race, and I was like, what the heck am I doing, man? That I thought the descent was harder than the actual climb out of Hell's Gate. Yeah, if this is your first time on Hell's Gate, I would definitely get out and walk this descent. Get an understanding of the line where you need to be, your tires shouldn't be, and then you can be a lot more confident in knowing as you make your way down. It's really not that bad, but it definitely helps to have a spotter uh, if you're kind of new to wheeling, newer to wheeling. But yeah, you can make your way down it. It's it's really not too bad. There is a video that I saw, I'll post the link down below, of a Razor. Uh, coming off that top lip and I think going forward, rolling forward and then sliding all the way down. So shorter wheelbase rigs are definitely worse off on stuff like this. So uh, definitely be careful. You want to stay back and watch me. Oh, I will. But just like he said, great advice. Just keeping your hood level this away. Yeah. And it's really, it really is it's very, very simple. All right. All right, once you make it down the descent, you gotta just drive on the easy sandy trail over to Hell's Gate. And if this tree limb is still sticking down, I would stay a little bit more to the left. Oh. 
All right, now we've made it to the ascent of Hell's Gate. So here we are. Uh, really, this obstacle can be broken down into two sections. First, what I call the V-notch section. Uh, it's basically a V-notch that takes you all the way up to really the only spot that, um, that we need to get into detail is this flexi section. It's just the name that I've given it um, because it does flex you out, if you, especially if you have the wrong line. Uh, so we're going to get into that in detail with all these, with all this footage, and uh, we'll start off with probably one of the first times, maybe the second time that I've uh, climbed this obstacle. This was my old Jeep Wrangler JKU on 35s. Uh, this is definitely the first uh, first time of being filmed doing it. Um, so the idea on this V-notch section is to keep your hood level and steer accordingly. So, you know, if that front driver tire drops down in that crack, I turn a little bit to the driver's side. Just to keep everything level, uh, you kind of want to straddle that crack uh, the whole way up. You can see I'm pretty far up on that wall on the passenger side here getting set up for this flexi section. So... You can see here, this is the flexi section that I talk about. Um, most of the incidents that occur on Hell's Gate happen right here. Uh, we've taken it multi you know, different ways over the years, different lines, different vehicles. Uh, this is actually a pretty good line here. You can see I'm kind of tilted a little bit to the driver's side. Um, pretty high up on that wall on the passenger side. It's actually a pretty dang good line. Um, you can see my front passenger tire does come off the ground a little bit. And I'm going pretty slow. This is probably one of the, like I said, the, the maybe the second time I've done it, I don't know. Uh, the idea here, once you get up over that hump, you just turn hard driver and then you're out of it. Um, it kind of makes it look pretty easy in that video, but that's basically the idea. I mean, there's nothing to it, really. Uh, here comes Koi. He's got uh, three and a half inch JKS lift, 35 inch tires. And he's just straddling that crack. That's what it's all about. You, you don't want to slide down into it. It's not the end of the world if you do, but um, these first two videos, we're keeping our passenger side tires pretty high up on that wall which is great. Uh, I think that's what you really should try to aim for. Because if you slide off into that, it's it's just kind of a mess trying to get back out of it. The Koi should have turned a little bit. Yep, there he goes. A little bit passenger there. Gets up over the hump, climbs right out. No problem, really. All right, here comes McVeigh. Uh, he he gets into the mindset, man, where he just wants to get out of something, um, which it works out great. And you know, a lot of a lot of instances, staying nice up on that wall, slides off a little bit, gets down in the bottom. Not a big deal. There's a couple different ways to take that. Uh, didn't even look like he lifted a tire as he came up out of the flexi section there. Maybe just the driver tire right there, but. Definitely did it smoother than I did on that first video. Right here's some dash cam footage from Bill's rig of Cameron going up in his new LJ. Well, it's old, but new to him that he's he's been building. He's got it on 37s, and man, it's a nice rig. He's got a swap and Atlas transfer case in it. He gets cattywampus here. Um, he should have been a little bit over driver. Then he kind of corrects himself, which is good. It's kind of our idea that it's up to the driver to get to the flexi section. Um, that's not hard. You just got to kind of stay out of that crack and counter steer, if you will. Now he slides off the wall here, which kind of puts him in a bad spot. And he lifts his front driver tire pretty good. So he's spinning some tires to climb on out. 
and he's going passenger now to kind of kind of get back on that line that he should have been on. He's working it here. And climbs right out. Didn't look like he lifted a tire coming up out of that flexi section, which is good. All right, here's some in-cab footage, dash cam footage of Bill climbing. This was his first time. He's got a JL Rubicon on 37s. Yeah, he did an awesome job climbing up this. You can see me up there. I'm positioned way up at the top, just trying to help him out a little bit. And he keeps his hood really level. I'm steering him a little bit to the driver here. And the thing about this V V notch on the bottom is it kind of snakes a little bit, especially at the bottom. So you're going to have to do some turning and some manipulation of that steering wheel to keep yourself on the right line. It's working him. It's working himself up at a really great pace. I like the speed that he's running at right now. So I was keeping him up on that wall on his passenger side so he wouldn't slip off. But the thing about that is if you stay on that wall too long, uh, you're going to be way high on that passenger side. So once you get up that wall on the passenger side, you can't stay there too long. You've got to kind of come back driver a little bit. You can see Jimmy straight ahead there. Spotting him. And then hard driver as he get up. He did great. Really a perfect job. I wish I would have got some footage of him climbing out of this from from outside of his Jeep. All right, here's some older GoPro footage of Cameron climbing up in his old... JK. He's doing good there. I'm kind of, I'm spotting him and get him messed up. I should have brought him more. See how he slips off the wall there. I should have brought him a little bit more passenger there. But he climbs right out. I mean, it's, it feels awkward. I get him back up on the wall. Quick correction there. And then he's set up for the flexi section. He's looking pretty good there. See, the tires will naturally want to turn to the driver a little bit as you climb up that obstacle, so bring him a little bit passenger. You can see his front passenger tires down in that, that seam or the crack, if you will. We'll talk a little bit about that. You can see there's a ton of sand on it this year that we did it. So it makes it harder. Koi, same song, second verse here. He's doing good. Turns too too much to the driver there, slips off the wall. And he didn't have his front locker on, so. I don't think it's necessary to get somebody back up on that wall, but um, if you can, it's not gonna hurt. But it's not a it's not a make it or break it kind of thing. They set up pretty good here. For the flexi section. Just lifts that tire just a little bit. I mean, it's not not too crazy. Climbs right out. Easy peasy. All right, this was my 93 YJ. Man, I still think about this rig. I wish I'd have kept it. Cameron had me high up on that wall on the passenger side there he's kind of correcting me that's a this is a great line though maybe back a little bit passenger there you go that, uh, that's that's a perfect line to me right there it 
see my front passenger tires up on that wall, not down on the seam. Now, this thing's not going to lift tires. It's got um, long travel coilovers and plenty of flex. So, but I think some of the the line there helped too. The Camry Cameron had me up on that wall, which I think did help out a little bit. So you can kind of play with that. See what works best for you. Let me know. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. All right, here's a video. This, <laughs> I didn't have my sway bar disconnected. Just I had no idea like until I got to the top. So, so this is what happens when you, when you have your sway bar connected on the flexi section. Lockers are on. Sway bars connected. Okay. You know, on these on these Jeeps, it's come just driver. a button. And, you know, sometimes nice. you turn the rig off, you turn it back on, and it doesn't reset. So you got to make sure you check that stuff before you climb. Here comes Jerry, and you can see the wind is howling, and there is a ton of sand on it. Jerry's got his FJ Cruiser on two and a half inch lift and 33s. This was his first time in Moab wheeling ever, and he did awesome. So uh, I spotted him down the descent and and said, "Man, I'm gonna stay right next to you this whole time," and tried to get him on the line, um, but I messed him up. It's looking good so far. I'm bringing him towards me a little bit. And this is a different rig that I'm used to spotting up this too. So Jerry's got his rear locker on, no locker in the front, and there's a ton of sand too. So it looks like he's set up pretty good, but you're gonna see what happens here. I should have had the whole rig uh, moved a little bit towards me. And then that would have kept his rear driver tire from going in that hole and, and slipping up like that. Another mistake we made here is Jerry didn't have his uh, traction control on. I can't remember. It's like KDSS or something. Um, so that would have given him a little bit of a locker action in the front. That would have helped, helped him climb out. I wasn't too concerned about him actually laying it on its side there. couple backups and resets and man he comes over that hump we thought we had it made you can see no locker in the front there now he's nestled in that crack on the passenger side I think if if I would have gotten him up on that wall he would have climbed out you can see his rear passenger tires in that little hole if he would have straddled that a little bit I think he could have made it but uh, we went ahead and winched him on out He's definitely giving it heck. Um, you know, there's rigs waiting at the bottom though, and I was like, all right, let's let's get cruising here. This is a video of my buddy Todd and his Ford F-150 climbing out of this thing. Man, he um, his for, again first time Moab driver Ford F-150 truck, and he just gives it heck on Hell's Gate solo by himself. Uh, with his girlfriend spotting him doing an awesome job he's just working his way up having to back up a little bit here and there to keep things moving forward getting a better line looks like he should have been over a little bit more passenger here But the obstacle kind of corrects himself there, kind of, you know, slips him off back to where he should be. And he's doing great. Yeah, some in cab footage from Todd here. We didn't get the full, uh, he didn't get the full footage from the top. The camera crapped out, but, um, now you can see he's, and he's in that crack there, you know, but. But he's giving it heck, so that's all that matters. 
to me anyways. So he realizes it and backs up and and corrects himself. Todd's got 35s, I believe a two and a half inch lift on his F-150 and uh, he's got a got a locker in the rear, nothing in the front, open front. And, and he climbed out of this man his first time in Moab, which is very, very impressive to me. I love it. Love seeing different rigs on this on this obstacle and, and in Moab. Get me through this! I gotta get up on the wall! How about a round of applause for Todd? First time wheeling in Moab and he makes it up Hell's Gate successfully. It's awesome. Now here's some cab footage of a Gladiator coming up. So this was Cameron's old Gladiator that he had. Just a two inch spacer lift and 35s. He's cruising on up. Uh, these long wheelbases really excel on stuff like this. You know, they're not great for uh, sharp breakover angles and stuff like that, but but they just cruise right up this. It's got a great line. Spotter positioning, you know, I'm right in the middle there. He can see me. This is a perfect, perfect execution here. He didn't get didn't get off the line at all. He's in a good spot, so I'm probably going to bring him a little bit passenger here. Steady speed, great finesse. No starts and stops. That's what I love. And he climbs right out. Here's uh, here's footage from Cameron's first time that he did it. No lockers. Open front and rear. We eventually swapped in some JK axles. So we had lockers there. Uh, later on in the life of this rig. Great line straddling that crack. He's keeping that passenger side up in that wall. This looks great. Now will come a little bit driver, you see, so he doesn't get too high. That's what I was talking about. If you get up high on that wall, you can't stay there for too long. Nestles himself down nicely in the in the bottom before the flexi section. It's really set up perfectly. Spotter's telling him to turn passenger, which is perfect to me. He's set up perfect. So yeah, no lockers. The onlooking crowd is saying, turn your lockers on, turn your lockers on. And Jimmy's saying, ah, he doesn't have lockers. He doesn't have a locker on. He doesn't have one. He's open, he doesn't have one. He's open front and rear. Still, he needs to turn it on. <laughs> then you got that guy saying, still, he needs to turn it on. Man, I swear there's a wing nut in every crowd. But he ends up climbing out. I mean, you, you know, if you're in a situation like this, you don't have lockers, you got a tire off the ground, you can use that left foot braking technique. Use your left left foot on the brake, pump it, try to try to reset the ABS. And a lot of times it works. And that's what he did here. Kind of set himself up to uh, straddle that, climb out of the flexi section. Comes right out, man, no lockers. Heck of a driver. Way to go, Cameron. Yeah, Cameron. Here's Cameron coming up in his gladiator that he had. It's kind of in that crack. He started off in that crack and then I brought him 
I was like, what are you doing, man? So I brought him a little more driver. You can see how the, the crack kind of snakes around a little bit. So you want to here, you want to come a little driver, a little passenger, I mean. Yep, now, now that's driver it. a little bit. Just a little bit, yep. That's perfect right there. Stay like you are. Just got it straddled. Yeah, stay like And then I'll bring are. him a little driver here so it doesn't get too high. You can see that black driver. tire mark little on that driver. wall on the passenger side. Straighten it up. Nestle them in nice. That's it. Here, it's a yeah, safe, it's safe spot doing? to be before the flexi section. Yep. And I keep his passenger tire up on that, up on that wall a little bit. He doesn't even lift a tire. That long wheelbase, like I said, like really that. excels. Now start Put some links driver. down below. Come some back. other long wheelbase Come rigs doing it. Uh, th three quarter ton pickup. Right now back, back down it. Ford excursion stuff like that. They excel it on stuff like this. Go down it. Ah, yeah. huh, dude, that was perfect. That was the best you ever did it. I think that long wheelbase helps. On this one, probably, so. Yeah. On everything else, no. No. <laughs> dude, you just like, it was like, just a highway. Uh, I, Let's do that, dude. I was telling her, the first time I did it, I was scared to death. And now it's just like, did we put uh, Okoy on a side there a couple times? That's the escalator. Oh, okay. That's next. Is that That's next. Are you doing it next? So is true. All right, guys, that wraps it up for part two of this video series with Hell's Gate. I sure hope you guys learned something from this video. I know I sure did learn a lot just by making it. Uh, hopefully it was useful to you, and maybe now you have a little more confidence and understanding of the line to where you can give this obstacle a shot the next time you're on this trail. Um, and if you guys have any questions about Moab wheeling, uh, any other trail recommendations for Colorado or Utah, leave your question down below and I'll be sure to answer it. Make sure to comment, subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and until next time, appreciate it.